Jeff Cedar home, and I've got several memories, but probably the the best one I have is my oldest daughter, Katie, was a member of one of the early youth orchestras, and I think it was one of the first ones that went to New York. I can't remember whether it was Carnegie Hall or Lincoln Center, uh, but to hear her talk about that then and then listen to her 15 years later, she still has fantastic memories of that, and, and it's, you know, it was a highlight of her life. There's a certain zaniness that they bring, especially Bobby, to this whole <laughs> area and, and every time you walk in the door that zaniness kind of hits you in the face and you, you have to come to appreciate that, um, that zaniness. And, and one other memory that Mark mentioned while we were talking, he said we have a balanced budget. He gave Tim credit for that and, and uh, I applaud Tim because when I was on the board we were always <laughs> talking about uh, I'm an old Episcopalian and we used to talk about faith budgeting <laughs> and, and that was Bobby's way of, of budgeting back when I was on the board. But, you know, it really isn't a mystery. It takes everybody to do that. Yes, for sure. I've had my time to... <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Allie Renfro Causey. Um, I'm probably one of the first generations to grow up with the Cultural Arts Center. I was 10 years old when it opened. I can remember I was part of the youth orchestra. I took ballet lessons from Miss Lita. <laughs> and um, my favorite memory was the children's exhibit where we could jump up and the shadow would take your picture and it would stay on the wall. It was the best thing in the entire Mom would drop us off and we would stay there for hours and hours and hours. And then I do remember also, she was on the board, my mother was on the board with Puddin for serendipity and they would come out here and do the murals and I learned what a trump lawyer was. <laughs> So those are some of my fond memories of, and I hope to grow with the Cultural Arts Center. I was um, uh, very privileged to be asked to be on the board when I was only 25 years old. So I came back and I enjoy it and I hope to be a part of the future. Alan Ray, former board member of the Cultural Arts Center. Uh, my fondest memory is the Ink and Blood exhibit. The attendance was the highest I think I've ever had for any exhibit. Um, the artifacts that were brought in were um, superb to anything I've ever seen before and it's right here in Gaston and to see something like that you have to travel at least to Washington DC or thousands of miles off to see it but it, I was so intrigued I went through it three times just to try to uh, learn more about it and uh, since then I've looked, on, looked at articles and uh, videos on it and, uh, and since then I've heard other people talk about it so it's been one of those exhibits that you'll never forget. <laughs> My name is Amanda Fowler, and uh, I'm the oldest one here, Bobby. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, there's so many memories. Uh, how do you choose one? And they're all good. And I would, uh, I would say one of my fondest memories uh, is working with you, meeting you with Jamie. And uh, one of the funny memories is when Mary Harden and Jamie had already gone to Atlanta to uh, meet with the Coca-Cola company uh, to get $25,000 uh, uh, before we opened. And uh, they had called here that day and said, please don't come because we're not going to give you any money. And uh, uh, Mary, uh, they called uh, Jamie and Mary on the way over there and said, you all might as well come back home because Coca-Cola company is not going to give you any money. And Mary said, the heck, they're not. And they went and met with them, and they got their $25,000. I'm Danny Ray. I'm a former member of the board years ago. And I've watched the foundation develop over the years to really become, I think, the vision that most people had in mind and done a great job. Uh, but not only is it the cultural hub of everything that goes on in Gaston, but it's sure impressive to when you bring people in town and you want to show them your town, you start off here. And it's so impressive to them. Uh, when they leave, they uh, really understand what uh, Gadsden's about. Uh, we have so much tradition, so much history, and a lot of it you can see right here. And I think they do a great job, uh, not only for the foundation, uh, but for the city as a whole. I'm Jamie Sledge. Um, some of my favorite memories of, of this place are, are the um, beginnings when uh, 
Dan Callen and Mayor Means and Frank Helderman. Uh, and we met in, in uh, Nan Callen's studio at her home, and, and Nan said, uh, we need somebody to, to uh, develop some focal point in Gaston to help, help um, um, get folks together and to, to support the arts. Nan was always the champion of little theater, uh, the symphony, and just about everything that ever happened here culturally in this town. And I was uh, just out of school and, and brand new in town and, and uh, wanted to be involved in community activities. And so uh, Frank Heldman said, uh, you're going you're gonna to work on this. And I said, yes, sir. And, uh, and, and that group kind of helped start it. Uh, we, began with the 11th Street School where my mother taught school um, until it was closed and, and uh, combined with Stripling Elementary School. And the idea was that 11th Street School, which had good structure, but a lot of maintenance problems, including a new, new roof was needed, uh, could be a gallery space and meeting space. And so we put a new roof on that building, raised the money for that. We designed the, the uh, layout for a community center there at 11th Street School. And then um, the city decided that it would be better if we were downtown and, um, and had a space downtown. And then that's when the old Bell Hudson department store with the only escalator in North Alabama uh, became available. And we changed our, our plans and, and goals and, and came here. And things have just miraculously been successful since those beginning days. Talk about talk. I can talk about talk.